the next speaker, Sri Harikiran Vadlamani, uh, was actually referred to be by uh, referred to me by Swamiji many years ago, and since then he's become a very good friend. But more importantly, if you think about the 20th century, the one word that it brought into public consciousness, and it still is in public consciousness, is the word activist. So there are activists in every sphere across the world, which of course the most uh, public example that we saw was Satyagraha and the way Mahatma Gandhi used it. And then in the last 20 years, there is the word called Dharma activism that has become very prominent. And Sri Harikiran Vadlamani, who is a serial entrepreneur as well, but he is a brilliant representative of this word or this stream of action called dharma activism. Because what is important for dharma activism is putting your thought, word, and deed in behind what you are convinced about and what you want, the change that you want to see in the world. Sri Harikiran Vadlamani has gone one step further. He's put money, thought, word, and deed behind the very important streams of dharma activism in this world today. And at the, big, at the forefront of his agenda is the topic that he is going to speak about. He is the uh, founder of Indic Academy, an institution that has supported both Chinmay International Foundation and Chinmay Vishwavidya Peet in many different ways. Um, some of you who have scholarships may not know this, but you really have Indic Academy scholarships. Where it's just that we in our own administration haven't got to the stage of actually naming scholarships. But if we named scholarships, some of your scholarships would be named uh, Indic Academy scholarships. So with that, not taking too much longer, I invite Sri Harikin and Vadlamani to speak on the topic Indic Renaissance, a vision for students. Swami Adhyanandaji, Dr. Gauriji, Mahadevaji, Sundar, Arundhati, Sridharan. <coughs> I committed to coming here almost uh, five months back, and I was not sure <coughs> why I was invited. And in the mail, it was not so clear. And I landed here yesterday evening. And uh, Sundarji told me that I have to give a, a keynote ex address. So I was sort of ambushed with that task. And then uh, my wife and I we were chatting this morning, and she said, do you think you can really connect with the students? Because uh, you are always you know, intellectual in interactions and all that. Would you be able to connect with the students? I said, Bhagavan Shankara's uh, grace, I hope to. So, End of the uh, end of my talk, you must tell my Sundari whether this Sundar has done the right thing in asking me to address the keynote uh, address. I, I need a volunteer. Can somebody raise their hand and? Huh. So I'll give you nine words, and I want you to repeat these nine words at the end of my talk. Right now, you just remember them. So they are learnability. Creativity, simplicity, accountability, exponential, global, tenacity, gratitude, attitude. Got that? Now we'll see after my talk whether you got all of them. There are two stories on Netflix that I was watching. One was an interview by Dr. Indira Nui, she's the first women CEO of a global company called PepsiCo. You must all be drinking Pepsi Cola. So she's from Chennai and she became the CEO of PepsiCo. So when she came back to Mailapur, her house in Chennai, uh, when the announcement came that she was the CEO of this company, everybody came, all the friends and relatives came and they sort of shook her hands, but they all went to her mother and then congratulated the mother and said, wonderful way you raised your kid, congratulations. 
So this lady was sitting there, and you know, they were very pre-functionary uh, shake hand with her, but they actually spent time with her mother. There was another TV series, TV movie, that I saw of uh, the man who knew infinity. Srinivas Ramanujan. It's a wonderful movie. I request all of you to watch that movie. Today, I'll cover five themes. One is my relationship with Shankar Bhagavan, and I'm so happy that I'm here again uh, after five years. And some of us are uh, uh, sort of nutcases as far as Shankar Bhagavan is concerned. And we get these crazy ideas about what we should do. One of my, the, the beginning of my dhar dharmic activism has actually started with the blessings of Shankar Bhagavan. It so happened that there was a conference on non-dualism, Advaita, in California. And it was called Science and Non-Dualism. And it was a two-day, three-day conference, and I was looking at all the uh, you know, different sessions. And there was no mention of Adi Shankaracharya. There was one small session on Vedanta. That's it. So you can imagine that the, 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 the saint, the man who gave us this whole concept, who distilled the essence of the Vedas and gave us the concept of non-dualism, he is not recognized in the world. So this was a moment of epiphany that, that this needed to be changed. This, the name of Shankar Bhagavan needs to be known to everybody. So these few of us think that, OK, just like he has established the four matas around the world, why can't we look at establishing four matas ar around the world, not around India, not around Bharat alone? Or we are currently working on a project where we want to install 108 murtis of Shankar Bhagavan around the world. We have started, the first murti is going to be installed near Coimbatore, but we want to install it everywhere. Someday, thanks to Narendra Modi, we had this World Yoga Day. Someday, in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, I am sure that there will be a World Oneness Day dedicated to Shankar Bhagavan. This is my dream and vision and the purpose with which all the dharmic activism is uh, happening. My relationship with Chinfo started with my meeting with Swami Teja Manalji in Singapore and then he introduced me and we started supporting uh, the uh, Bhagavad Gita courses uh, on Facebook and also with Arundhati we are working on KTPI. More importantly, we want Chinmay Vishwa Vidya P to establish their third campus in Hyderabad, in our land in Hyderabad. And in five years' time, when the regulations permit, we are going to work with uh, Swamiji and establish. So by the time you finish your degree and you're uh, working in the corporate world, you want to do an executive development program, I'm sure you'll come to Hyderabad to Chinmay Vishwa Vidya P in Hyderabad campus and do your program there. One other thing that stuck with me about Chin, uh, Chinfo here when I came in 2013 about Gurudev's is very mischievous with words. He plays with words, and uh, he 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 gives. Uh, uh, so his theme for uh, I, I, is about connecting the pundit with the public, science with the spirituality, east with west, uh, science with uh, uh, science with spirituality. I'm, past with the present. So this is a very uh, interesting, it encompasses a lot of distilled wisdom into the vision of this institution. And so this struck me, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, uh, it later. My own life's journeys and, and values and, and, and what, at the age of eight, uh, 55 that I look back, is that it is very important for me to continuously learn so learnability is a very, very important value for me. Last year, I attended two executive programs in, I live in Singapore, so, but I, I went to Boston, to MIT to attend an executive program there. Then I went to California to attend an executive program there. All my life, 
I have always continuously invested. I'm a actually chartered accountant, but went into industry, then doing so many diverse things. And the important value that I've learned is that what you study is useful for a particular point in time as an entry level, but you need to learn the value of continuously learning new skills. The gone are the days when you know something and you join and that's, you retire like that. Those days are gone. Every six months, every one year, every two years, you have to reinvest. So therefore, learnability is a very, very important value. The other value is creativity. We have to explore our creativity. We have to think big. We have to take risks. So in that word creativity, entrepreneurship is there. Ability to think out of the box. The second, third is simplicity. We all create wealth and the tendency to get attached to the world, to wealth, and Mahadevanji was talking about fashion. So I would urge you to be detached from the wealth that you create as you go forward. As, as the Gita says, it's renunciation in action, not renunciation of action. So therefore, you need to be simple in your in, in the way you are attached to these kind of desires. Oftentimes we are struggling with failures and tenacity and not giving up is an important value that you should think of. Post my Californian trip to Singularity University, I'm, I'm a child accountant but I went for a technology, one of the things that I've learned is that you have to think the world is moving in an exponential pace. It is not a, a linear pace anymore. Growth is exponential. So what happens today, the growth is not even 10 times, not even 100 times, not even 1,000 times, million times. You see examples of that all around you in social media. So you have to think exponential. Indic Renaissance. So we are at a very interesting phase where the whole world is consuming our thought. I don't know whether you remember there's an old movie uh, called Divar. So Amitabh Bachchan is there, Shashi Kapoor is there. So Amitabh Bachchan is a smuggler and then he gives a big dialogue saying, Mere paas gaadi hai, bangla hai. And he asks Shashi Kapoor, Tumhare paas kya hai? And he says, Mere paas ma hai. <laughs> so imagine that Xi Jinping of China is talking like that. And he's saying, Mere paas one belt road hai, one shanga hai, ye hai, Shenzhen hai. Tumhare paas kya hai? And Modi says, Mere paas culture hai. Think about it this way. There is a need for economic power, but today the world consumes Indian culture. Be it yoga, be it cuisine, be it Ayurveda, be it our spirituality, our handicrafts, Anything, visual arts, performing arts, music, literature, they come here for tourism. Every aspect of our culture is consumed globally. There is no other country in the world which has as rich a heritage as we have. Today, the world is consuming that. So you, if you recognize that as an important point and you have come to this university which is enriched in culture, remember that even though you could have gone to another university and done a BCom, but if you're doing a BCom with Indic values, this will stand you in very, very good stead because the world is consuming our culture. In the corporate world, so you're going to go back to the corporate world after your graduation, BBA, BCom. You know what are the words that are talked about? Purposefulness, mindfulness, design thinking, sustainability, ethics, diversity, wellness, happiness, logic, and clarity in thinking. These are the words that the corporate world globally is talking about. All these words are backed with Indic wisdom. Whether it is the Gita, whether it is the Yoga Sutras, whether it is the Nyati Shastra, whether it is the uh, uh, Artha Shastra, all this wisdom is packed and we have to understand and learn. So some of you are doing BA in Sanskrit studies and Indic traditions. 
So you will know that you will get plenty of jobs. There is no dearth of jobs who are going to study uh, Sanskrit traditions at all. Trust me. And those of you who have chosen a, a BCom, and you, because you're studying here with a, a, a associate packets to Indic wisdom, trust me, the world is looking for leadership who have Indic values. So you're in the right place to go and conquer the corporate America and corporate world. Artificial intelligence is a big thing. There are a lot of jobs that are going to go away in, in, in globally. And one of the things that will happen as a result of it is that you all heard of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. So universal basic income will be given. Everybody will be given a check because there are no jobs. What will happen is they would be hastening for a pursuit of Moksha. So there is a global demand for Acharyas, global demand for Indic wisdom. So please spend time, spend time even while you're doing your BA or BCom, if you're doing your BA Applied Psychology, you are rightfully positioned to be an executive coach. Once you do your master's, you can become an executive coach in Google. Large CEOs of, uh, CEOs of large companies would be consulting you because the moment they take over a leadership position, they need some wisdom. And your BA in Applied Psychology will be of great value. Indira Nui, coming back to Indira Nui. So after this incident, she went back and then she did an interview. And in that interview, she was mentioning that this incident in Chennai triggered a thought. She went back to uh, uh, her office and to the top 200 executives of her company, she wrote to their parents she wrote a letter, dear parent, Tom works with PepsiCo, he is in my team, I'm so happy with him, you have raised him so well, he is a great guy. She wrote that letter to 200 American parents and all of them were touched. They were in tears, they talked to her, they met her and said nobody ever, never, nobody ever thanked us. So this is the CEO of a top company giving Indic value, our value. You understand the beauty of that thought of what she did. Similarly, Srinivas Ramanujan and Mahadevanji was talking about faith. If you see that movie, and he talks about, he's a mathematician, so the, uh, you can be as scientific as it can be, but he's a very devout uh, and a religious person. And so his professors in Oxford, Oxford uh, or Cambridge, they, they ask him, why are you so religious and scientific at the same time? And he says that I cannot conceive of any equations without the blessings of Devi. The equations are a manifestation of Devi. So you see, you can be, I mean, he was using, he was not using the word scientific and broad-minded, but you can be scientific, but at the same time, you can have bhakti, you can have a shraddha, you can have saranda. So that is what what Indra Nui and Srinivas Ramanjam have taught us, and the two words that I want to leave with you today in the Guru Purnima day is gratitude with attitude. Be grateful to the gurus who have taught you, and not just grateful as because, okay, he has taught me, there's a transaction. No. Do it with an attitude of surrender, of shraddha, of bhakti. And then you see the transformation within you. The West has taken several examples, whether it is Karma Yoga, whether it's Ayurveda, whether it is a meditation, everything they've taken. 80% they will, they will do asanas. They won't do uh, 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 with the namaskar. They won't do it with the feeling. So they've done everything, so they get the physical benefits of it. But the day Harvard comes back and says, attitude is important, you will see that the whole world will change. They will all become index. The whole world will become Indic in thought. Gurudev has manifested itself. Again, I was talking about Chinfo. When I started Indic Academy and I looked at what is Indic thought and I put the definition, it so happened and it just flew out of my uh, thinking 
that indic thought is somebody who transcends science and humanities who transcends tradition and modernity and who transcends east and west the moment i wrote this i was shaken aback and i sent a mail to sundar ji and i said look do you see the similarity and that is the beauty of bhagwan who is just manifesting itself in our actions in our thoughts if you only we had the shraddha thank you very much